Life moves at a fast pace. Everybody has challenges. But God is on the move. From Pittsburgh to Nashville, join me on the journey on today's life, sharing stories of unshakable faith. God often calls us to step out in faith, not knowing if we will succeed or fail. If we are faithful, He will see us through it all. We all know it's one of the greatest Christian animated series for children, VeggieTales. It has reached millions of families worldwide. But what inspired co-creator Mike Naraki to leave a study and desire for a medical career to venture out into the world of animation? How did God change his life and faith through the ups and downs of one of the greatest Christian video series of all time? This is his story of unshakable faith. This is Today's Life. Mike, thank you so much for inviting me into your home in the world of VeggieTales. Now, what would Larry the Cucumber say to me right now? <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to my home. <laughs> my house of vegetables. <laughs> VeggieTales has been an amazing property and around the world. Take me back to where it all started. Wow. Well, you know, maybe I could go back to um, even where I, I felt the call, you know, to, to do ministry. Um, you know, I grew up loving to make people laugh. Um, you know, I was a big fan of a lot of different comedies. Um, uh, Mel Brooks, uh, the Dr. Demento Radio Hour was probably my favorite thing. Uh, it was parody music, you know, since so where Weird Al got his start. So I just loved uh, making people laugh, and I came to Christ um, when I was in middle school. So um, my uh, my dad had uh, just just become a believer, and uh, you know all of all of us. I grew up with three brothers, and my mom. We kind of all noticed we had a new dad, and were interested in what that was, and so we started going to church. And um, uh, for me, it was watching a Billy Graham crusade on TV. Love and, Billy uh, Graham. Yeah, yeah. Love so him. so um, so I, I came to Christ in middle school. Um, and I found an outlet for that creativity through the church that I started going to. So if there was a play or, or a choir or, or anything I could be in, I just, I loved doing that. Um, but I felt a call in, in later in high school to serve in ministry, um, but I didn't know what that looked like. For me, I was, uh, I, I, you know, I had this passion for drama and music and theater, but I didn't have a model for what that could look like in a ministry angle. However, my dad was an engineer, my mom was a nurse, my older brother was a chemistry major, so I, I kind of took those models and I said, well, you know, maybe, and then the church that I was going to was very missions-minded, and I thought, well, what I'm going to do for God is I'm going to be a medical missionary, and so that's, that's the direction I'm going to head off on. Um, so I went to a small denominational college up in uh, the Minneapolis area, Crown College is what it's called now, St. Paul Bible College okay. at the time, and that's where I met Phil Vischer. Uh, who's also known as Bob the Tomato. And so Phil and I um, began uh, collaborating on a puppet team there. So it was a student ministry. All the students were required to do a ministry. And I'd done some puppetry in high school, and so had he. And so we just really hit it off creatively. We would love to just, you know, write these crazy stories. And, you know, and we, we, we traveled around with our troop going to different locations. And we'd like to say we roamed the Minnesota countryside scaring the Baptists. <laughs> that was our favorite, our favorite line. And so, but we found this creative collaboration. We got to be really good friends. Um, but he had a plan to go to, uh, to go to film school. That's what he wanted to do. I wanted to go to medical school. We were at the small college. Both of us thought, well, we'll, we'll just go here for a while because, you know, we didn't have those educational opportunities there. So, uh, we ended up, you know, uh, going our separate ways after a year and a half there, but then I ended up moving to Chicago to, to go to, uh, you know, per, to pursue pre-med. 
uh, which is where Phil was living as well. Um, Isn't that and so, interesting how he brought you back? Got yeah, back ab back absolutely. And so I, you know, so I was in, in Chicago um, and I needed to, to get residency in Illinois for, to, to get state school. I was going through a rough, my family was going through a lot of turmoil, a lot of rough time. My, my folks were going through divorce. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, so I, I left, uh, left Colorado, um, moved to Chicago uh, and started working. Um, Phil was working for a video post uh, production company at the time and um, after a few months uh, a position opened there as a you know graveyard shift video duplicator so I said oh I can do that you know so I started working there and then just started getting more and more involved in production and Phil and I were working together um, and learning the new this new trade of you know a lot of a lot of what was happening in video production at the time uh, was was brand new nonlinear editing computer animation was just coming on the scene and we started talking about what we could do to take um, the, 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 the writing and the performing and what we had done with puppetry and translate that in, into computer animation. All the while, I'm in school, you know, so I'm doing, you know, working part time and, and going to school. Um, and, uh, but, you know, God just kept opening these different doors. And, but, and for me, it was just like I was just passing through. This is so much fun. I love doing this, but I'm going off to med school. So I finished my, my undergraduate in biology and I applied with the Peace Corps. Uh, I was accepted. I was going to go teach biology in uh, West Africa for two years and then come back and go to medical school. So that was a plan. So I, I, I was accepted. Meanwhile, we had been working on a promo for VeggieTales and really with literally within the same month I received my acceptance letter from Peace Corps and found out that we got funding to do our first show for, for VeggieTales. Now so. go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with the idea of VeggieTales? Well, it, necessity was the mother of invention, really. The computer animation was brand new at the time. So uh, really, if folks can remember the Scrubbing Bubbles commercials mm -hmm. from the late 80s, early 90s, that's what, about as complex as you could get with computer animation. Pixar was just doing some early experimental films, and this was even before Toy Story came out, which was the first computer-generated uh, feature film. So we needed really simple characters, you know, characters with no clothes and no hair and no limbs, you know, and uh, to tell stories. So if we if we had a simple character to tell a story with, then that that then we we could actually afford to tell a story. Um, and so we just decided to use vegetables. In fact, Phil had had animated a he had he had modeled and animated a candy bar kind of moving around uh, in one of those initial tests. And his wife Lisa uh, walked by and said, "I don't think moms are going to like." great values coming out of candy bars, you know, there's just something, so then the next thought was, well, vegetables, you know, are healthy, so, so it was just, that, that was all the brilliance that was involved, you know, so it was, it was just, you know, uh, characters that were goofy enough to work and, and with, with telling stories. Well, did you have any negative responses from other people when it, when you started creating vegetables or? Oh, well, yeah, trying to sell in the show was, was kind of funny, you know. So, you know, we, we would go in and we were looking for funding, so we would, you know, pitch the idea of, well, we've got singing, talking vegetables are going to tell Bible stories. Would you like to give us money? And, <laughs> and everybody yeah, would be like, It's like, no, I don't think so. No, that doesn't sound like a very good idea. But um, it, was, it was just goofy enough and cheeky enough, and we were able to get enough money you know, by you know, putting in our own time and money and um, raising money from family and friends. Um, to be able to, to afford to do that first episode. And once we made it, you know, then people were people like, oh, wow, this is really interesting. We took out ads in Christian parenting magazines uh, to, to sell um, the first 500 episodes that we had. And one of those episodes was, per, was uh, um, an executive in Nashville with a, uh, at Word Records saw, saw our ad and ordered a copy and fell in love with the show. But you were still pursuing a career in the medical field. When did that all change? When did God decide to take you... A yeah, it's a different, well, so this is leading up to uh, getting funding for our first show. So, uh, so this was back in 1990, it was early 1993 uh, when, when that funding came through and, and I had I'd finished my, my undergraduate and was about ready to go on the Peace Corps. So it was at that moment of, okay, we're going to work on our first show. Um, and I'm going to stay here for that, or I'm going to go to Africa, you know, to, to be in Peace Corps. So that, that was sort of that, that split, that, that fork in the road for me. So it was early 1993. And so then by later 1993, Christmas of 1993, is when we finished production and shipped our first show.
Michael, when did you know that God was taking you down a different path and you were going to switch from your medical career to the big idea? <laughs> You know, it was one of those things that wasn't, it, it wasn't like the, the clouds opened and a voice, you know, came down and said, you know, do this. It was more of a, I think it was a process of discernment. You know, I remember when that, that choice laid before me, you know, when, with that acceptance letter for Peace Corps and the, you know, the funding for the, our first show, you know, it was a real, I was at a point where, okay, I have to decide and whatever I decide is going to really influence my path and, and where I go. And even I had spent so much time following what I felt was going to be my call. You know, uh, I just, it's like, well, did I waste that time? Um, you know, what does God want me to do with that? And so, you know, for me, it was a process of praying about it and asking the people around me who knew me best, you know, for advice of what I should do and, and really, you know, um, were your parents I, upset about it or you know, were they my, concerned? <laughs> by this time, you know, my folks were back in Colorado and, and I was, you know, out in, in, in Chicago and, and I, um, you know, I know my mom particularly, you know, who was a nurse, you know, she loved, you know, the fact that, you know, I was going to be a doctor and she bought me a, a you know, as a graduation present a, 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 from my undergrad, a, a leather bound edition of Grey's Anatomy. And, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like very, that was very meaningful. I thought, oh, I'm going to disappoint my mom if I, <laughs> if What'd I don't do this. What did you say when you decided to? Oh, but they were, they were very, they were very supportive, you know, you know, and I can imagine now as a parent of a, a college child, I'd, I'd be freaking out. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> but she was, uh, and she both and my dad were, were very supportive of the decision. They didn't exactly know what that was going to mean, but a lot of people around me, a lot of my friends really, you know, were able to identify like, wow, you know, we think you have a gift in this area and, you know, so maybe maybe this is where God wants you to be. And I, I really do believe that, you know, I, I, if I would have followed that other path, God could have used me as well, you know, um, but it was at that moment, it was just this the sermon of, okay, this is what I think. I, later, um, years later, we, uh, when I was doing research, we, we told the story of Esther as Veggie Tales, mm -hmm. and um, that was really meaningful to me when we did that. Just to as as I was researching that, here was this character who um, basically was put in a situation where she had to make that decision of what to do, you know, at, at such a time as this, and and you know, to 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 act uh, in a, in a way that God was going to you know use her to to bring glory to himself and to, to help others. And so, you know, so at that, that moment um, in time when I was making that decision, you know, I considered it my, my Esther moment, you know, what, what am I going to do uh, to, with, with how this way, how, how God's calling me. And, and it wasn't really cut and dry, but you can look back and say, okay, I think God's hand was, I, I think oh, God's hand was in that the whole time. Veggie Tales has just boomed. Take me back, do you remember the days when, you know, everybody wanted Veggie Tales? It was so surprising because animation is sort of the thing where you, you're in the studio making the donuts, you're making the animation, you're producing it, and then you're sending it out, and people are watching it, you know, away from you know where it's being produced. You know, it's like if you're in theater, you know, you're you're in front of a live audience, you're seeing how people react. Um, it was really interesting to start getting the feedback back in those early years because we loved the shows. We'd send it out and we and then we started getting feedback. Oh, you know, people are liking this and they want you to make another show. Okay, I'll make another show, and then you start to hear that college kids are having uh, Veggie Tales watching parties and we're like, really? T-shirts, <laughs> yeah, toys. exactly, all those sort of things. And um, you know, we were really new to it, and uh, but it was really. You know, it was very surreal to know that, you know, it was really catching on. And even those first few years, from 1993 to about 1995, we were, you know, still struggling to keep the lights on. Even though, you know, we were getting advances uh, on production, they were still really lean. And, you know, we were, you know, struggling just to produce the shows. But, you know, over, you know, from around 1995, 96, it really started to catch on. And, hey, why don't you guys do an album, too? Because you, you can just combine some of the songs that you've used in your, you know, in your videos to, to make a music album. So okay, so we threw a few of the songs together and then the album sold, you know, like crazy. And it was just very, very surprising for us. And we're up in Chicago, which, you know, we were in the production field in Chicago, but Chicago is a very commercial, you know, they do a lot of commercials. It's not really an entertainment town. And so for us just to kind of see, um, you know, this whole thing blooming all over the United States was, was really, uh, you know, it was, you know, a surprise for us. So big entertainment, mm -hmm. big idea entertainment, yeah. that was in Nashville, right? Well, we moved to Nashville in 2004. So we got our start in Chicago. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, from 1993 to 2004, we were up, we were up in Chicago. Yeah. What is your greatest memory or moment through the Veggie Tales? Oh, wow. Um, 
the success part or? You know, there's a moment for me, I mean, there's probably several, but I remember um, one moment sticks out when I, when I kind of realized, wow, this could really work. Um, we, were, uh, we, were in the, we were renting some space from a friend of Phil Vischer's in the, in the old Sun, Sun Times building in Chicago, right along the river. And Phil had modeled um, and lit the room for uh, the, the living room for Junior Asparagus, where he was watching Franken Celery on TV on Where's God When I'm Scared, which, are, which was our very first episode. And I just saw the, the computer rendering out the scan lines in this beautiful 3D image. And I was just staring at it thinking, wow, this is really a magical world of computer animation. And if we can make a show that draws people into this world, then I think this could, this could really work. And really, you know, our, our hope at, from the very beginning was to create something that would draw people in to stories that would help parents pass on biblical values to their kids. You know, to, to just, to, you know, knowing that how important story is to how kids see the world and how, they, uh, how their beliefs are formed. We felt like, yeah, if we could, we, we could draw people into this world to tell stories uh, that assume there's a God who made us, who loves us, who wants a relationship with us, and then to remind him that, you know, he made them special and loves them very much, that, that this, could, this could really work. What is your greatest challenge? Greatest challenge? I think over the years, um, I think storytelling is hard, you know, to telling a good and engaging story. And so that's, that's what we were always, um, that was always our biggest challenge uh, I, for me in being in the production. It's like, okay, how are we going to tell a story that's really engaging and, and new and fresh, you know, time after time. Over the years, um, we told, uh, we probably had 40 or 45 individual stories that, that we told. And it was always a challenge to, to make sure that we told a good story. Um, and, you know, looking back now, you know, we were more successful at times than other times, and that's just the nature of it. But I think um, it's, always a, it's always a challenge to tell a, a, an engaging story, and particularly when you're trying to get a message across and, and you know, just you know, have, have something that a, a child is going to remember and take, take hold of. You know, God takes us through those successes and then failures. Yeah. VeggieTales or the company had some really rough times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you share that with us? Yeah, you know, we um, we we grew a lot um, in the in you know from about ninety six to two thousand, um, and and we we overextended ourselves, and so by um, by the time we were in production of our first feature film, which was Jonah. Um, we were self-financing that at the time. Um, nobody wanted to do a, a faith-based film. Now you see a lot of faith-based films. For them, you know, we couldn't get you know outside funding for that because people just weren't doing it. And so we were funding uh, Jonah from uh, ourselves. Um, and then we had to you, to do that. We had to slow down uh, production of our DVDs or VHS series at the time. And so we overextended ourselves. We were also launching a new property, Three Two One Penguins. Um, and by the time the movie came out, we went through bankruptcy, and so we basically lost lost everything. Um, thankfully, the brand was still very strong, and we got purchased, and you know, VeggieTales was able to continue. But that that process of of growing and and, and losing everything, um, and it was, was just that was a really that was a really uh, tough time to go through, um, and just just coming to terms with what that what that meant, um, and. Um, but, but in the end, it was for me. It was. Uh, I remember, um, just uh, there was a Twyla Paris song at the time, "God Is in Control," that I just remember, you know, listening to when it would come on the radio, and it was just very meaningful, knowing that, you know, this is this isn't in my control. It's in God's control, and whatever He thinks He wants to do with it, you know, that that's up to Him, and I just need to be faithful, and I need to do what he wants me to do in the whole situation. Mike, how did God change your faith through the bankruptcy and where he has taken you, you know, 12 years later? Well, you know, because of the early success of well, not necessarily early, but those, you know, that, that first 10 years of EduTales, I think it was easy to, um, to feel like everything is okay. You know, I got everything under control. You know, I have to worry about 
money. I don't have to worry about taking care of my family because, you know, we've got this, you know, amount that the company is worth. And so I can rely on that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, when that's gone, you realize, no, you know, that was just a, an illusion. You know, God, God wants you to rely on him. You know, he wants to, he he wants you to pray. Give us this day our daily bread, and 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 rely. Look look to him for for what you need. Um, and so for me, that was the that was one of the big the big things you know, that I experienced going through the bankruptcy. Did you just have to, the panicky you know, feelings and oh, what am I going to do next? Or? Uh, yeah, you know, um, uh, in some cases I did because we didn't know like. We just didn't know what was going to be next, and so you know we had gotten used to, you know we, you know doing these productions, and we you know had, we're in this rhythm of creating shows, and now you know what how was, you know what was going to happen with with this whole property, um, and so, yeah, so we just didn't didn't know what was going to happen, um, but um, you know we were we were purchased out of bankruptcy. Um, the folks who per purchased us, they were a New York company, Classic Media, and I remember they came down. They came out to Chicago and said, look, you guys have a great audience, you tell great stories, we just want you to keep on doing what you're doing uh, in a creative sense. And so that was a big, you know, and for me, um, all, much of my time was spent in the studio, it wasn't spent on the business side. And so my job didn't really change all that much. I just kept telling stories just like I had always told stories. Um, and we moved down to, we moved down to uh, Nashville. Um, Phil stayed up in Chicago and continued to work um, you know, a contract basis on the show. So still was, Phil was still doing writing, he was still doing voices. Um, but we moved, moved down to Nashville and got a, a new start down here, basically. Um, and then, you know, for the next, you know, season of VeggieTales, we were doing our productions out of Nashville. We weren't, uh, when we were in Chicago, we had a whole animation team there. And that was part of, part of the financial issues was because, you know, we had 200 people employed down there. Um, but when we rearranged the business, it was more of a, a smaller creative team creating the scripts um, and the music and the story reels. And then we would, um, we would uh, do animation in other parts of the country and the world um, you know, for the show. Um, so, so the business model changed, but we were able to continue telling stories and you know, the, the heart and the DNA of the brand remained the same. What would you say to somebody that was venturing out on a new Christian business? Oh, well, I think you know, just to, for, for us it was about, you know, having the idea of, of something that people, of, of, of a need that exists. Mm -hmm. and we felt like parents, um, looking at the marketplace, parents needed something that would help, uh, a product that would help them pass on biblical values to their kids, you know. So we felt we had a really entertaining way to do that and it would be a, a great thing. Um, and then also just the timing of it, you know, there, VHS, you know, uh, the ability to bring in a movie into your home, you know, hadn't really existed before that. And so the technology was at the place where yeah, you could you could form a business plan around this, you know, this new technology. Um, and, and now it's different, you know, you know, VHS and DVDs, not a lot of people buy them anymore. And so, you know, and that was the part of the struggle with the, the VeggieTales model because it was that's the business model was built off of. Um, we actually um, about three years ago, uh, did a deal with Netflix uh, for a new VeggieTales series, VeggieTales in the House, and that's been in production, you know, for these last three years, and that's, um, you know, we're, we're wrapping production on that this summer, uh, but um, it's just, you know, f figuring out what, what your message is, what the need is, and then, you know, what the environment is like, the business environment, you know, to, to, to bring that to people. Um, and it's tough. You don't always know. And sometimes you just have to step out in faith and do what God's calling you to do. Um, sometimes it'll work. Sometimes it, it won't. Um, but um, I think that's another instance of just relying on God to just say, you know, I just want to be faithful to what you're calling me to do. So what's next for you? Well, I want to continue telling stories. Um, you know, uh, you know, if there's, a, if there's ever opportunity to do something VeggieTales related again, I would love to do that. Um, uh, but I've been um, consulting on a number of projects and helping out in development. Um, you know, I'd love, I love that um, the, the, the kids' story space. So um, I've been uh, working on a, um, uh, developing a, a, a series for, for, for girls uh, ages 5 to 10. Um, that's been a lot of fun. Um, I've been working on a, a, an album project with a, a Christian artist here in town. A lot of these things I can't talk about quite yet because we're not ready to announce. But um, and then uh, 
and then you know other other types of, of stories and shows you know just in, in development so I'm you know so one of the questions I want to ask before we close is how your faith has taken you from success to you know going through the bankruptcy to where you are now and you know for me it's a matter of um, you know, you think of Job, you know, the, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, blessed be the name of the Lord. Where do you sit? Just that attitude, because I think at times too, even, even when, you, when you're, you're in a time of plenty, there's, there's that, you can feel guilty about that too. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, you know, look, look what I have, you know, people don't have, maybe I shouldn't have this much. Or when you don't have, when you're in your time of need, it's like, wow, God isn't giving this to me, you know. Um, but I think in both of those places, if you can just if you can just sit in a place of gratitude, you know the Lord the Lord has has given this to me. Thank you, God. Or the Lord has taken this away from me. Thank you, God, because there's other things I can learn through this. You know, so it's not necessarily seeing material things as a blessing from God. It's just what it is, and just just relying on God in everything, whether in, in plenty or whether in, in need. Well, Mike, thank you so much for sharing your life and your stories and you have been such a blessing to parents and children around the world. Thank you so much Terry. Isn't it wonderful how God has given us all gifts and talents to share his message of love, grace, and forgiveness. Remember you too have a story to tell that will give him honor and glory. This is today's life. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.